Uh, I'm Christian Nentwich. Um, um, I did my PhD here, finished in 2005, I think. Um, and it was a PhD in software engineering. And I thought I'd tell you a little bit about uh, my company, uh, Duco, um, which I co-founded um, in 2006. It was the second company I founded, the first one I sold, and th that was a, a spin-out from UCL um, that I set up um, with my uh, two PhD advisors. Um, so the question is, what does a bank have to do with finding the perfect marriage partner um, and the game of Go? Um, so um, the problem we solve is essentially we, um, we basically make sure that the financial system doesn't collapse again like it did last time by taking some operational risk outs. And we do that in fairly new and innovative ways. So what you see here is in the financial tool of choice, which is Excel, um, you see a trade book. Um, so these might be um, interest rate swaps that banks are trading with each other. You can see the sort of suitably uh, interesting amounts that you don't want to lose uh, on there. Um, and the problem here is that if you're a bank and you're trading with somebody else, um, you say, well, I'm selling you, you know, I think I've sold you, oh my god, that's a lot of zeros. I, I think I've sold you 8 billion uh, yen worth of, uh, of interest rate swaps. Um, but you've got a record in your systems, so what do you think, right? Um, if, we've, if we've both got a million of these trades, if we disagree on any of the attributes on this screen, chances are something is going to go wrong, right? If we disagree on the end dates of a trade, I close out the trade, you don't, you ring me up, you say, you owe me, um, you owe me three million, and I don't know anything about it, so that's not a very happy day. So that's sort of the, the problem in context. What we do is we reconcile information between multiple banks within various systems within the banks to make sure that nothing gets lost. Now, let's go back to um, these chaps here. Um, what does it have to in common with this? So let's move on to the next one. Um, they're all the same problem. You already talked about algorithms, so now I'm going to have to talk about algorithms as well. There's a problem called the stable marriage problem, right? Um, this is what a computer scientist thinks uh, a stable marriage looks like, right? <laughs> in, in a group of 20 people, um, as long as two people who are married with somebody else, sorry, as long as two people who are married wouldn't rather be married, both rather be married to another person in the same group, everybody's happy, right? Um, <laughs> Um, so we can represent this actually as a graph. Everything can be represented. I don't know why Bob and Alice are so popular, right? It's, uh, Bob and Alice always feature. Um, so if you look at it this way, we've got a group of four men and four women. Um, Bob might have certain preferences, so he very crudely assigns a number score to all of the women in the, in the room. Uh, so Bob clearly wants to marry uh, Jasmine, but who knows who Jasmine wants to marry, right? So you can take all this information in, you can run a global optimization algorithm that tells you who should be married to who to maximize the level of happiness, okay? <laughs> now, if we flip this over, um, this is the same problem as the problem with the trades, right? If I'm a bank and I've got, you know, my trades on the left-hand side, my trading partners have trades on the right-hand side, how do I know which trade matches which one? They don't have any sort of shared information that says it's the same thing, right? You just send me a trade, you say, you know, I've done a trade for five million. I've done many trades for five million, which one is it, right? So we can, we can essentially apply the same algorithm and score these, and I think these two trades are the same, and I have to check them for errors and flag that, um, and f flag it as a risk control to people. Now, again, as uh, Daniel sort of pointed out, these things are always really, really easy to solve on paper. Um, they're even quite easy to solve in a research lab because in a research lab, you always look at, you know, oh yeah, well, well, you know, there'll probably be a thousand trades, right? So, I mean, no problem, right? Just write a, write a simple algorithm. Where, where the sort of uh, additional um, um, skill comes in is what do you do when you've got a, a million trades? This is what we call an n squared problem, right? It rises in complexity relatively quickly, although not as quickly as his problems, it's still bad enough in practice, right? I mean, you're already looking at a trillion combinations. And just for, as a point of reference, I, I talked to somebody from um, financial services industry utility the other week who wants to look at using this to solve this for 100 million trades per day. So we're, we're up to lifetime of the universe type comparison times uh, very quickly, even in this, in this space. So. This is where this comes in, right? Uh, attacking these problems at a very large scale. 
but I don't have time to talk about this bit, so I'll skip this. Um, the sort of areas we touch as an organization, I thought this might be interesting. Um, we use uh, natural language processing quite heavily. Um, didn't talk about this bit um, in, in the previous slides, but um, to make these things actually usable by um, operational users who are not computer scientists is, is sort of half the challenge. To make it a very simple, almost app-like experience um, requires a lot of effort. You can't put code in front of them because they won't understand it, so we use natural language techniques. Uh, we use a concept of automated repair, so now something's broken. What do you do about it? Well, we can make suggestions to you, so you don't have to go figure them out. Um, and we use a certain level of data validation to make sure that bad information doesn't get into these processes. These three, um, these three lines here all sort of trace directly back to, um, although they've moved on quite a bit so in the last um, nine years, they trace directly back to the PhD research um, that I did here at UCL with my supervisors. Um, on the other side, there's some areas that we brought in uh, externally um, that we didn't do research on in UCL, but highly parallel algorithms. Again, um, how do you um, distribute work across many different workers so that the problem breaks down and this is how you solve uh, this is how you solve the problem of, these, uh, of the time getting out of, out of bounds very quickly. And then statistical optimization techniques, which is um, an area bordering uh, machine learning. Again, cutting down problem sets intelligently so you don't spend um, huge amounts of time solving them. So, so, to, um, so to sort of wrap this up, um, what does this become? Um, it becomes our company, Duco. So, we're, we provide this as software as a service. We, we switch it on. It's a secure hosted service. It's not some, it's what you would call cloud-based in consumer land, but it isn't. We pay a lot of money to secure data center providers to, to lock things down on individual machines because our customers are very, very picky. And these are the sort of uh, organizations uh, we sell this to. Uh,